Everything's okay. He's been gagged and tied up. Serious, huh, Lieutenant? This ain't no Sunday school picnic, O'Malley. No, it's no Sunday school picnic. It's what a is church. Wrong with me? Yeah. They've got Joe. It's a high school group. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's a tough life. You make that one mistake too many, and what does it get you? If you're lucky. You could spend the rest of your life picking the pavement from between your teeth. If you're not so lucky, you could be taking a one-way trip to the county morgue. Who is he? Just another youth pastor who rented that one too many inappropriate Christian film for his high schoolers. He tells me they just went bazooic. If you ask me, he's lucky to be alive. Yeah, sure, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking these kids can be brutal. Well, I've seen things like this happen to all sorts. Senior pastors, CEDs, and even, even a choir director. <laughs> that was the ugliest. Lieutenant. Poor Chumpy. He didn't stand a chance. All he had to go on was a sentence or two of explanation and a blurry photograph my Aunt Queenie in Detroit could have taken with a Kodak Brownie. That is no way to pick a Christian film. Ah, sure, I know what you're saying. Christian films don't knock them. They've changed people's lives, caused revivals, given the service that extra kick it's needed. Well, you're right. All I'm seeing is the guy could have been a little smarter, that's all. If he would have asked me, I could have told him about a whole bunch of good Christian films. Like there's this one company, uh, uh, well, it's the name of it is, uh, 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 Detective, uh, what's the name of that company down there? Uh, uh, White Lion Pictograph. Yeah, White Lion Pictograph. Weird name, but good films. Anyway, these White Lion guys are just a ticket. These guys are fresh and creative with their films, and they've won a whole pile full of awards to go with them. Hey, Lieutenant. Joe, Joe, he's, a. Uh... Hostage! Come on, buddy. Who's Joe? Pull Joe, yourself together. He's a church janitor, Joe, and they're holding him for a ransom. Lieutenant, look. <laughs> okay, you kids. This is the police. It's hopeless, you juvenile delinquents. Give yourself up now. We'll go easy on you. <laughs> This is film number three of the six-part series on Lithuanian church history. You'll get the janitor when we get a decent Christian film. Till then, he'll be watching film number six of this dumb series. No! Should we rush them, Lieutenant? No, no, no. You never know what those kids might do. They're desperate. There's only one solution. Headquarters, get me music box. Yay! Yay! Now, we'll get that janitor out of danger. Yay! So what's music box, you ask? Only that poor chump's ticket to freedom, that's all. Music Box is one of the most highly awarded Christian films of all times. It's what you call a real classic. And it's all about this guy who has this boring job in, in this big, boring city. So one day, this guy's walking home, and a group of guys in, in these white tuxedos appear with little wings on their backs. And they sing this song about this king. 
Now, as these guys are singing, this man, who's probably never smiled in his whole life, is dancing around, grinning ear to ear. I mean, the guy is changed. But the Tuxedo Boys can't hang around forever. They do leave him this gift, though. It's a, a music box. The problem is, this guy doesn't share this music box. He keeps this gift all to himself. So the guys in the tuxedos, my favorite part, come back and set this guy straight. <clears throat> hey, you're not supposed to hoard it. Your gift. It was meant to be shared. No, she, she, she wouldn't understand. Wait, wait, no, no, stop. See. Hallelujah. Wait, no, no, stop. Hallelujah. 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 To the king of kings. Hallelujah. Terrible films like Music Box are great because you can use them in so many different ways. Well, you could use Music Box to teach a lesson on joy or evangelism or just to show how important it is to, for people to talk to each other once in a while. You know, parable films can be entertaining, but at the same time, make you think. Music Box has won a whole bucket full of awards from Christian to non-Christian film festivals. That tells me it's quality enough to grab people's attention and keep it without preaching to them. If you've already seen Music Box, I'll let you in on a little secret. The word is out on the street that there's going to be kind of like a sister film to Music Box. Uh, I can't tell you what it's about. I can't even tell you the name of it. But I do know this. It's going to be different. Joe. Joe, I'm sorry, Joe. <laughs> I just hope he can hold out. Yeah, this is one of the nicer cases. Worst case I ever saw concerned a group of bored first graders who refused to see Uncle Wiggly reads Deuteronomy. Yeah, those little people can get pretty ugly. If you have anything to do with kids, you do not want to be put into that sort of situation. Personally, I'd rather be staring down the barrel of a 45 than face a Sunday school class of first graders armed with paste bottles and blunt-nosed scissors. Now, these white lion folks, 
have just what you need in the pint-sized department. They got a six-part series for the kiddies. It's called The Good Time Growing Show. So if you've got kids in Sunday school, vacation Bible school, or kiddies church, these films may just save your life. Who was that? Just Russell. Just Russell. It looks like a lot of Russell to me. Is he always that me? Most of the time. Aren't you scared of him, Mickey? Nope, because God says not to be scared of anyone. You must be awful brave to not be scared of anybody. I'm not brave. Just that God says not to be afraid of anybody. We're supposed to trust God. Sometimes I think I'm going to be scared of Russ. Then I just say to myself, Mickey, you know God's bigger than Russ. Then I'm not so scared. Wow, is that all there is to it? Being scared doesn't do any good anyway. Besides, God said we're not supposed to. We're supposed to trust him. How does God know about people being scared and all? He knows about everything, Josh. There isn't one single thing that he doesn't understand. Does he understand spaceships and satellites and, and important stuff like that? Sure he does. He knew about all those things before people even thought of them. My dad told me that we're the ones who are just finding out about that stuff. God knew all the time. You know what? I just thought a church was just a place where you have to sit quiet and don't run around. I didn't know that you could learn all about these big things, like not being afraid of rust and stuff. You learn a lot more than that. You can just ask God anything, Josh. Did you know that he hears you every time that you talk to him? Every single time? Not just when you're good? Every time, and better than that. He knows everything we need before we ask. My grandma read that over and over again because she said it was something important to know. Nobody in the whole world knows things like God does. He knows everything about us. Does he even know that I'm scared of Russ? You bet he does, and he'll work everything out for the best. I guess I don't have to be scared anymore, huh, Mickey? Because even if Russ picks on me, it's going to be okay. Boaz, I'm telling you, there's no reason at all to be afraid of Sledge. If you're afraid, it only makes it worse. Oh, no reason to be afraid? Are you kidding? Have you ever seen how big that dragon is? He can French fry me just by sneezing in my direction. He breathes fire? Yes, he breathes fire. Huge, roaring, billowing clouds and flames. And he stops around like this. Boom, 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 boom. I'm terrified. Each of the six films deal with a separate topic, like the Bible. Fear Security. and forgiveness. Every the best thing about these shows secure, is know. they teach Back the kiddies. They're not just something to keep them amused God. while the teacher goes out for a cup of java. What are you building? Anyone can tell that this is a sledge proof wall, 100% unenterable by that bully sledge. No windows, no doors, or holes for him to get in. Yes, sir, I'll be safe in this. No. Doors or windows? How will you get out? Well, no need to. Got everything I need in the old cave. Well, what about food, Boaz? Oh, food. Hmm. I didn't think about that. Whatever happened to trusting in God, Boaz? I thought you weren't going to be afraid of that sledge anymore. <gasps> The Good Time Growing Show comes with a swell teacher's guide, and it lists activities that you can do and uh, scriptures and songs with each show. It's kind of like having a ready-made six-week lesson plan, and it goes real good with uh, any adult film series you might want to show. You know, to this cop, it makes sense to have a series for the kiddies as well as one for the moms and pops. Excuse me, Lieutenant. I've got a little problem here that needs your attention. Yeah, thanks, McCarthy. What is it, Dollface? Oh, Lieutenant, I, 
I hope that you can help me. Well, I'm no miracle worker, sister. Just an average Joe trying to do a job. Uh, what's the problem? Well, well, it's my brother. He, he's an associate pastor at a local church, and oh, well, it's his first job, and and they've asked him to choose a film for an upcoming men's retreat. Oh, he would be so humiliated if he knew that I was here, but but he just doesn't know what to do. And well, when I see him sitting up late every single night poring over those Christian film catalogs, but he's, he's just so young and, well, I'm afraid for him. Oh, no, now, cheer up, dollface. I got just the ticket. There's this white lion film called Miracle of Toxala. That's perfect for any group that needs a good spiritual challenge. It's a story about one of the most productive institutions in the world, a small Christian hospital in Pakistan. Blind people being made to see. Thousand people a year receive their sight at Christian Hospital Toxala because of people. People like Dr. Narvel Christie. Since 1947, the hands of Dr. Christie have brought sight to more than 90,000 people. The journey to Taxila began in his small town near the Afghan border. These Christians are a real witness Guided in a society a that friend, usually views Christianity with mistrust then and anger. For 70 miles to the hospital. Those of us with sight can never know what the darkness of blindness is like. What it means to sit waiting, listening. He cannot work or care for himself or his family. He can only wait, hoping someone will care to speak to an old blind man. It is early the next morning. Dr. Christie is making the rounds of all the patients that were operated on the day before. They call Miracle of Toxla a true story of work, dedication, and love. The film is really inspiring to all sorts of people, and it's narrated by Jeanette Cliff George, who you'll probably remember as the star of The Hiding Place. Miracle of Toxla is the perfect film to illustrate a lesson on dedication and active witnessing. It's the winner of several awards, including the prestigious Golden Camera Award. The operation is a success. The bigger rewards, though, are knowing that you're in the place you ought to be. The Lord, Christians are quite certain, has a job for anybody who, has a job for everybody in the world. A large percentage of the world doesn't bother to ask what that is. We're, Dorothy and I are sure that the, we're here because the Lord sent us here. And we stay here because he still wants us here. And it's rewarding to know that you're doing what you ought to be doing. God has given everybody a certain set of gifts, talents, abilities. Uh, I happen to have been born ambidextrous. Nothing to do with me, nothing I could do about it, nothing I can take any credit for. Paul asked the people in Corinth, what do you have that hasn't been given to you? Well, that's the way it is. Anything you have has been given to you. If you stop to ask who gave it to you, the answer has to be God. Nobody, they may have sharpened up some of their abilities, but nobody made their abilities. And I happen to have found that I 
the performing of eye surgery is one of my abilities. This is what God gave me to do. It's very rewarding to know I'm, I'm in the place where I can use this. God has a plan for you. He's given people abilities. He'll use the abilities you have, even if it's being left-handed. Happened to be made this way, too. I like the work. But I'm certain I'm accused of being a workaholic. It happens to be fun. And there's a chance here to do it. There's a job that needs to be done. If we don't help these people, if we don't cure their blindness, they'll stay blind. There's any place else they can go. So tell your brother to relax and get some sleep. The film comes with a leader's guide with scriptures and activities to make sure the retreat will come off with, without a hitch. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. You've given me some hope. Just serving the people, dollface. Just serving the people. Uh, one more thing, Lieutenant. Now that you're on a roll, do you have anything for adult Sunday school? Yeah, she was beautiful, all right. But more than that, she seemed to have what I would call a sincere interest in Christian movies. What a time to meet the woman of my dreams, smack in the middle of a hostage case. Here I am with Miss Perfect, while some poor blurry-eyed janitor may be reaching the end. One thing I did know, though, all this doll had to do was bat those dime store lashes and I would perform like a trained seal with a rubber ball. Well, excuse me, Lieutenant. Did you hear me? I wanted to know if you knew of a good film for adult Sunday school. Well, my brother, remember, he, he's an associate pastor. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry there, uh, doll face. Uh, I, I got a little sidetracked. Uh, Let's see, uh, adult Sunday school classes. Uh. Hey, well, Sweet Lips, you're in luck. Uh, White Lion, uh, they have two brand new films that I think are perfect. Let's see, uh, I know I had it this morning. Uh, oh, here it is. Oh, oh, These two spit. companion films are called and What Is God Like and What Does the Future Hold? This uh, planet will survive. I think God is just uh, and God is truth. Oftentimes, just doesn't uh, line up with what men consider justice, you know, because uh, for Israel, when I'm in Israel, I lost a lot of my family in the Holocaust, but I still feel that God is just. He has a plan for everything, so uh, I love him. I love him. I want my son to love him. The films are made up of interviews from people around the world. A film crew traveled to Europe, Israel, and different parts of America asking people two questions. What is God like, and what does the future hold? The answer to these questions oh, give you something, something that is impossible not to get involved in. These films are for any group that you want to get thinking and talking about God and themselves. It's especially good for evangelism training because it gives a look at the man on the street and what he thinks about the really important things in life. Or if there is such a thing as God, then if it means anything to you, you've got to accept, accept the whole, the whole lot. I mean, the book, his word, everything, totally. It's got to take over your life. It's got to. I'm not prepared to do it. To not be too poetic, I could see him uh, in the gentleness of a butterfly, and I could see him in the, the terribleness of an atomic bomb. Uh, you know, a very close friend and a terrible judge. Uh, one who will come as close to a person as that person will allow him to come, or as far away from people as they will hold him away. He is a very personal um I mean, he's something very personal, actually. Um, someone, I think, that's very real. Someone you can have a very close relationship with. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. You've, you've been such a wonderful help. My pleasure, Dollface. Well, you know, I think that the media is such a fascinating thing. Why, just last week, our pastor was talking about how he wished that our church could do something on television, well, but that it was really just too expensive. Well, it doesn't have to be. But how? You, you have to pay for all of those strong men to carry all of those heavy boxes and, oh, and all those cute cameramen. Oh, and you have to pay for the salaries of those TV directors who are so creative and, and good-looking and... Well... Wait, wait, wait a minute, man. Hold on, sister. Now, I know a weekly TV ministry series can cost a bundle, but you can use TV without having a dog and pony act every week. Now, the White Lion Films have something they call devotional spots. The devotional spots are 30 and 60 second scriptural movies that can be put on TV like regular commercials. The spots are 100% based on scripture. That means they represent your church, but at the same time minister directly to your community.
And the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see where he was lying. were opened and his sight was restored. And he began to see every man clearly. At the end of each spot there's a place for your church's message. Just have your pastor contact his uh, Christian film distributor. I will, and thank you so much, Lieutenant. Uh, well, I know that you have a life and death crisis here on your hands, and, but it was just so sweet of you to take the time to help me. O'Malley, what's the status on our hostage? Not a peep for the last 10 minutes. We think he might have passed out. Hey, you kid with the hands on my car. Oh, oh Lieutenant Shovel? Yeah. Oh, uh, sir, I understand you know a lot about Christian films. You might say that. You might say it's my uh, hobby. Well, you see, sir, I I'm a Bible college student, and I don't know anything about Christian films. Oh, well, you know, they all say you're the best, sir. Oh, oh I hate to bother you. I, I know you're busy right now with this hostage thing, but, but you see, I I've got to find out. I'm, I'm doing a research paper. So you want to know a little bit more about Christian films, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Why don't you step into my office and I'll fill you in, okay? Oh, well, gee, thanks, Lieutenant. That's swell. Okay, a quick course on how to use Christian films. You taking notes? Oh, you bet. Okay, great. Now, the first lesson is this, kid. Any Joe Average can show a film. I mean, he turns off the lights and shows it on the wall. Uh, there's no trick to that. But showing a film is like using the wrong end of a golf club. You may hit the ball, but you're completely misusing the instrument. Okay, I see. You do? Oh, yeah. Well, well, the key is to use the film, not just show it. But like everything else in this crazy, mixed-up world, it takes a little time and, and, and effort. But the results are always worth it. And don't kid yourself. Christian films aren't cheap. So what you need to do is use the film so you'll get every dollar's worth. Are you following this, kid? Get every dollar's worth. You following this, kid? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, how about some coffee? Huh? Oh, no. Yeah, I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich here. Would you like a little bit of that? Oh, no. Oh, do, do you have salmon on rye? Kid, what am I, a delicatessen? Oh. Okay, now let's go on. There are what I like to call six P's to successful film ministry. Six P's. The first P is pinpointing your audience. 
Now, you have to know exactly who you want to reach with the film showing. Okay? Let's pretend that you're having a showing of music box at your church. Now, you got to ask yourself, who do I want to see this film? Uh, 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 my, my, my mother, I guess. Okay, your mother. Uh, who else? Oh, uh, uh, Marty. And us. Uh, Bernie. Okay, you got your mother. You got Marty. You got Bernie. Kid, who else? Oh, and Candace. Uh, Candace would come. Kid, this is a movie. This isn't a Monopoly game. Don't you want everybody to come and see it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I want everyone to come. Define the kind of audience you want to emphasize. Now, is it people in your church or maybe a particular group in your church, like, say, uh, high schoolers or uh, senior citizens or uh, maybe people in the local community that haven't uh, been to your church before? You see, once you pinpointed an audience, you get a better chance to reach them. I guess I would want to get the unchurched people in the community to come. Okay, okay, now you pinpointed an audience. The goal here now is to reach those people who never come to church. All right, now let's get to the uh, second of the P's, and that is promotion. Now, promotion can mean anything from radio ads to posters. Okay, anything you do to get the word on the street. Start with your church members. You can buy bulletin inserts from your local distributor. Put them in the bulletin a week before the showing, along with a written and verbal announcement, telling them to, to bring a friend. You can get posters, too. Make sure you put a couple up in the high traffic areas of your church to remind people of the showing. And if you have a church newsletter, make sure you tell them about the showing as many weeks ahead of time as you can. Ad slicks are available for many of the films, and this allows you to put an eye-catching ad in your newsletter or bulletin. The ads are designed to reproduce on any photocopy machine. The second way to promote a Christian film is outside the church, like uh, buying radio ads on uh, secular or Christian radio, uh, putting up uh, posters in local businesses, or uh, placing ads in local newspapers. Great. Uh, tell me, Lieutenant, is there any way to get the word out for free? That brings me to the third P, publicity. Publicity. Press releases are the main source of publicity. They are available pre-written for each film. All you have to do is retype the release on your church stationery with the correct date, time, and location, and send it to the local newspapers, magazines, radio station, and television stations. You should also send a publicity photo, especially to the newspapers. You can get photos and press releases from your Christian film distributor. Yeah, I never knew that showing a Christian film was so involved. Well, like I said, Junior, showing a film is no problem. But using a film, that's another matter altogether. I guess that's sort of like swinging the wrong end of the golf club, huh, Lieutenant Shovel? <laughs> One metaphor at a time, huh, kid? Oh, sorry. What's the next step? Uh, showing the film itself? No. The next step is preparation. Another P, remember? The study guide, or teacher's guide, is a valuable resource in the planning stages. It has scriptures, discussion questions, and activities to go with the showing of the film. You should pick and choose from the ideas in the guide, using those you think will work the best with your group. Each rental includes a free screening for the pastor, so he can preview the movie before he shows it. Preparation is especially important for children's films like The Good Time Growing Show. Activities and songs are suggested for two different age groups of children. Preparation is really important to make sure you have the right materials for your activities. Okay, I've done promotion, publicity, and preparation. What's the next P? Prayer. Because all the promotion, publicity, and preparation won't help a bit unless there's somebody there to listen to what he needs to hear. Gotcha. Okay. 
Now you're ready for the last P, presentation. Bad presentation can ruin a film and its impact. Well, sort of like a beautiful dame with too much rouge or day glow lipstick. Kind of spoils the mood. You know what I mean? I, I think so. The most important link is the projector. That's what can make or break a showing. If at all possible, make sure that you test the projector far enough ahead of the showing to find a replacement if it doesn't work. Always clean the film gate with the Q-tip that comes along with the film. Swing back the lens and focusing mechanism and clean the area fully. Dirt and grit can ruin a delicate film with ugly scratches. Remember, you are responsible for damaged prints. When you test the film, check to see that the exciter lamp is on. You can't hear the sound if it isn't. And that the tone and volume are adjusted to the proper level. If possible, always use an external speaker which should have enough cable to reach back to the projector. Always use a movie screen instead of a wall or a sheet. It will improve the brightness and the color of the picture. Also have the audience sit toward the center of the room because the picture isn't as bright when people sit uh, over on the side. If it's still light outside, make sure you cover the windows with a dark material. What this all boils down to, kid, is this. You've got to make sure everything is in working order. Test your movie. And always, always have a spare projector lamp around. Oh, my goodness. My, my goodness, Lieutenant. I think I have enough uh, here for 10 research papers. That's just the basics, kid. The real fun comes when you get to be creative with Christian film. Oh, like how, Lieutenant? Well, there's really no limit on what you can do with films. All it takes is a little work and a little imagination. Wow. You must really enjoy your hobby, Lieutenant Shovel. Well, Junior, I'll tell you the truth. It was the raw thrills that first brought me to Christian films. Police work can be pretty dull. What with the murders and kidnappings and miscellaneous felonies. A man's got to have a way to challenge himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lieutenant. It's here. Thanks, McCarthy. You may have just saved a man's life. Okay, you kids. Here's what you asked for. Shovel here. Oh, oh, yeah, Chief, hi. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Case solved. Uh, what? Oh, you say you're responsible for a family night at your church? Yeah, okay, I see. And you need a good Christian film to show. Yeah, yeah, Chief, I think I can recommend a few good films. <laughs> 